Hi everyone, Roy here on my channel Roy Reads Anything and just thought I'd make a quick off-the-cuff video about Read What You Own um, but also mainly really to test out my new phone because I've got a new phone, obviously it records stuff so I'm just seeing what happens if no plugging stuff in, no adjusting any settings if I just uh, just record on the phone. What's the quality like? There's a backup on my camera so uh, we'll see if you're if you're watching this and I'm looking at you then it's probably worked so read what you own I crashed out of it after 27 books so this is the challenge uh, originated by criminally and promulgated with vigor by MJ and participated in by lots and lots of people so the idea is you read books that you already have before you buy new ones. Um, now I did it with a lot of exceptions and workarounds and I'll, I'll come back to whether how wise that may or may not have been. Um, and like I say, um, I finished now. I was hoping to do 100 books or keep going for a year uh, but for various reasons I've come to an end. Now Let's see, I've got five thoughts about Read What You Own, and they're not negative, really. Uh, they're just partly things I've learned and things I've enjoyed about it. Uh, so, number one, neophilia. Neophilia is a word for a, a love of the new, a love of novelty, uh, which I realise that I have quite powerfully myself, you know, it's a always wanting the next thing and the new thing feels more interesting than the old thing uh, so expressing that in a fancy way if I'm sailing my small boat out onto the vast ocean of books I'm more interested in where it's going than what's behind me you know I'm looking I'm the pilot looking out and across the the, the front <laughs> um, so so that's partly that you know I've got a real passion for following going down rabbit holes following ideas and following themes and grabbing things so it began to feel a bit of a burden because of because of the 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 the, uh, the call of the new um, having said that there's I did have immense fun delving into my existing books um, treating my own shelves as a kind of bookshop and finding stuff in them and exploring and having the having the discipline to read things to the end so my second point is that it is great it's, it's really good fun for that reason so um, yes uh, number three is the the what I've called Kindle debris so as a long-term Kindle user I've got lots of stuff on my Kindle and there was stuff there I'd forgotten I'd even had, you know, bought or downloaded or whatever. Uh, and um, that was great. There were some really good discoveries there of basically books I had that, you know, I suppose because you can buy them in a nanosecond, you, you haven't necessarily registered, you know, that you've acquired the thing. So, so some great discoveries there. That was really good. Um, also... I've started, so I'll finish, a, a kind of pleasure of iron discipline of actually finishing stuff. So if I've left lots of books lying around with bookmarks or objects that I use as bookmarks stuck in them, as well as the aforementioned Kindles, actually pushing through and getting to the end, there's a real satisfaction in that. So that's great. So yay, read what you own. Uh, my fifth point, having said how great read what you own is, is what I'm calling play it straight. Um, so I had lots of workarounds and sort of get outs and what have you, which you think would make it easier, I think made it more difficult. If I played it straight and white knuckled it, not bought anything at all for any reason, um, until I'd read a set number of books, perhaps a smaller number than a hundred, I might have succeeded, um, as it were. I mean, you know, can you succeed and fail in something like this? I mean, it's just something you do, isn't it? Um, but yes, I, I, because of, if I look back, and I'll, I'm going to tell you everything I've read now in the Read What You Own period, 
and there's quite a lot uh, that isn't what I owned for reasons I'd invented for myself. So that meant, you know, I'm reading the read what you own bits proceeding a lot more slowly and therefore getting a bit more frustrating because of all this other stuff that I've been reading and enjoying along the way, you know, so it's like you can't serve two masters. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm at with it. So I think it's great. Does lots of really good things. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe maybe it's not for me. Uh, so just looking back. So this started at the beginning of November. Um, I read Silver Nitrate by Sylvia Marino Garcia. That was good. Part of a part of a group read. Um, Queen Cleopatra by Talbot Mundy. That was a novel uh, part of my Cleo Vember event. Uh, Sleeper Awakes, H.G. Wells, science fiction book, uh, Michael K. Vaughan's Cheap Old Book Club was the reason for that. Another Cleopatra book, Queen of Kings, Maria Devana Headley. And another another read, uh, group read thing, Nocturnes by John Connolly, great collection. I finished Dune by Frank Herbert, so that was good. I mean, it was good in lots of ways. It was good to have finished it. It was also a great book. Wanted to read it so I could watch the new movie. Didn't like the new movie, but that's another That's another thing. Um, an elementary novelisation by Adam Christopher. Elementary, the uh, TV series with um, modern day Sherlock Holmes. That was great. There's another one of those to enjoy at some point. At Christmas We Feast, a non-fiction Christmas book. Mysterious, mysterious Affair at Styles. Somebody called Agatha Christie. Pretty good, if you'll go far. Um, a Sweet Girl Graduate by L.T. Mead. Probably not spoken about this on the channel. So this was a um, uh, Victorian novel about a, a working class girl who goes to a basically like a Cambridge type college. So it's a bit like a school story of which L.T. Mead wrote many, uh, but it's set in in higher education. So really interesting for that reason. Uh, Agents of Dreamland, Caitlin R. Kiernan. Good, I enjoyed that. Short, I look forward to getting on to the next one. Uh, oh, I did another Christie as well, Murder at the Vicarage. I think that's the first Miss Marple novel. Uh, Connie Willis, Miracle, another Christmas book. Uh, collection of short stories. Meddling Kids, Edgar Cantero. Agatha Christie biography, Lucy Worsley, really good. Um, yes, I did finish Medusa by Jesse Burton. Enjoyed it once I, once I got into it. Short novel, one of these kind of classical mythology updated uh, kind of things. And I, I really like the way the, the woman, the protagonist, becomes, sort of owns her own myth. And it, it's a lot more empowering than just having her head cut off by some dude. So, uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, Miss Death by Gwyn Evans. Talked about that. Sexton Blake collection. And an Avengers novelisation by John Garforth. Uh, Avengers, the uh, TV Avengers. I think this would have been uh, for the um, Garb August 2.5.1 mid-year mid -year break. Uh, a Thongor novel, Sword and Sorcery novel by Lynn Carter. Uh, a People's Church by Jeremy Morris. Not spoken about that at all. It's a history of the Church of England. Uh, so that that was great. Good good to get through that. And also Shakespeare's Kings by John Julius Norwich. So this is a, a history book that's talking about the reality behind Shakespeare's history plays. The sort of Henry the... Henry the Fourth and Henry the Fifth and Richard the Third, those ones, and sort of sort of what really happened. So it's a mi mixture of sort of exploring Shakespeare in a literary sense and and history. Excellent. Um, Double Trouble, Two Fisted Team Ups, an anthology of 
fictional team ups of public domain characters. I think that probably probably deserves a chat all its own. That one. Um, yeah, come back to that. Good. Imagine. <laughs> I think the first story involves Frankenstein's monster encountering Captain Nemo up in the Arctic. And the final story involves Don Quixote meeting Prospero from Shakespeare's The Tempest and everything in between. So that was a lot of fun. Upstairs, Downstairs novelisation by John Hawksworth mentioned in passing on my Vacation Vlog, Ditto the uh, Mr Finchley novel by Victor Canning, I want to read a couple more of them. And then, uh, yeah, final three that I've not talked about, Carmen by Prosper Merrimay. So this was a like, it's on my Kindle, why is, why is this here? So Carmen, opera, great opera if you, you know, even if you never watched an opera, it's a good one to see. And... Uh, Based on a novel, so all of those adaptations of Car, all of uh, all of those Carmen opera performances, and updated versions like the movie Carmen Jones, can be traced back to this novel by Prosper Merrimay. Uh, cool name, and it's good. It's, it's a you know I I read it in one sitting. Uh, it's the character of Carmen. She's Romany, and a good thing about it is she's got this com complexity of character where she's both totally self-reliant and would just do her own thing and she won't be told by anybody what to do. Uh, but she also sort of believes in fate as being inexorable. You can't escape fate. Um, but... On the other side, and I'm talking in the novel, not so much in modern adaptation, modern adaptation, could call them adaptations. Um, modern performances of the opera will pro probably dial up the kind of proto-feminist side. But the horrendous racism and misogyny built into the novel, you know, needs to be dealt with in some way. And it, it's, it's hard to get away from. I don't doubt that Prosper Merrimay did a lot of research into... The, the Basque people and into into Romanies and so on, but uh, it's um, it's pretty pretty terrible the way they're depicted as you know the this band of robbers and sort of almost being like animalistic. Uh, so yeah, file under interesting. Uh, also read a Sherlock Holmes collection by June Thompson. So she's a prolific Holmes pastiche writer. Again, I've pretty much forgotten I had this and started it. So it was great to go from 14% to 100% of reading this Kindle book. And uh, really good Holmes stories, very much of the time. You know, they're not weird and wonderful things where he's suddenly facing, you know, strange things. It wouldn't happen in a Conan Doyle story. In fact, she puts a lots of little notes in to connect them to both the times and also to the um, rest of the Holmes canon. And I read the original script book of King Kong as preparation for Giant April. So those were my 27. Some things I've started not not finished as well. Um, that's just the way of it, really. Um, go, again, I, will, I intend to finish all of these. The Bela Lugosi uh, anthology monogram about his monogram B-movies. Uh, Howard Jones, Lord of a Shattered Land, Sword and Sorcery, I'm really enjoying. It's the fact that it's short stories, it's easy to sort of read one thing, ah, oh, don't just want to plough through them all, I want to enjoy these and savour them, so I'm going to give it a bit more time. Uh, Double or Nothing by Kim Sherwood, it's a Sherlock, it's a, <laughs> not Sherlock Holmes, it's James Bond, James Bond related, so it's in a sort of Bond universe novel. Uh, enjoying that, it's just there's too much mayhem in real life to really enjoy a shoot 'em up, is why I put it down for a bit. And as Sorcery Against Caesar, which I've talked about as well, Roman era, sword and sorcery. Um, so, bought and read, but not read what you own. So, these are using various excuses. Uh, Emma Bennett's A Christmas Truce, excuse, she's a booktuber. Prisoner of the Devil, Michael Hardwick, Holmes Pastiche, Excuse, related to my academic studies, Ditto, Loveday Brook collection by K. 
Catherine Louisa Perkis, uh, Brideshead Revisited, Evelyn Waugh, bought that based on an exception I'd built in for being on holiday and being able to visit indie bookshops and buy things. Uh, so there's those, and then there's some others re reading but not counting. Um, yeah, Self or Bearer by Walter Bazant, a Victorian novella. It's a novella in a magazine, so I gave myself a pass on that one. Prayers is a comic. Roman history book Palatine, I got that from the library. Hound of the Baskervilles is a comic. Bible in a Year is a podcast. Various audio books, such as Murderbot series, they're audio books. And uh, Art Colony Nurse was a gift, so, you know, there's all this stuff I've been reading that's kind of... It reminds me of um, back in the sort of early 70s. You'd have you'd have a pair of jeans and they weren't enough light flares for your for your taste. So one thing you could do is get your mum to insert a triangle of cloth, possibly a, a colourful fabric that would kind of bell them out <laughs> at the end. So by letting in these triangles of coloured fabric I've, I've made the made my my read what you own as flares ah oh dear what a ridiculous metaphor uh, there's a problem with that too because the the the, the, the gene front then sort of tilts upwards slightly um, anyway yes so let this collapse now that's where I ended up with read what you own like I say fantastic thing um, Probably not for me, but I'm committed to delving into my TBR and to revisiting what I've put on Kindle, not just treating it as a compost heap where things just drift to the bottom and who knows what happens to them. Okay, see you soon. Bye.